You're listening to the Ann and Ellis podcast with your hosts, Riley Mullane and Megan Knatz. Client was saying something to me the other day about how she loved listening to the podcast. I said, I truly cannot tell you how much fun we have doing it. Yeah. Like when, you know, we think about going and recording, it's like, oh, I get to go talk to my friend. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I do. I mean, well, I and, and I feel too, like there's <clears throat> enough, like you guys are business partners and you talk every day, but there's still a ton that you catch up on too, which I just find fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the things that we do talk about during the day are business related. There's not a lot of No. Not that we don't care about each other's personal lives, but there's just so much going on yeah. throughout the day, let alone the week. You know me, I'm all business. I don't want to I don't have time for your emotional yeah, that's stuff. That's how Riley. Megan starts off. We do a lot of audio messages back and forth. That's our line of communication and she starts out I just I had I had to get used to it, <clears throat> but she would always start out by being like First things first, I don't care about your personal life or your kids. I want to get down to business and hear some of the things we have going on. So she's very, very rigid in her communication, mm -hmm. but I think that's what's gotten us to where we're at today is her just not caring about I the don't. things that she doesn't want to care about. So. No, I don't. I don't care about if you're sick, bleeding, whatever. Get here and get your work done. <laughs> I got so dark. <laughs> I really felt it that too. I took yeah. on that energy. I hey, was listen, like, <laughs> there's probably companies that have. That's how it is. That's how it is. No, we're like, I cried in front of him like two days ago. Um, I don't know. He knows all of the girl stuff that happened. I mean, he know. Yeah, it's a lot of emotions and yeah. like family dynamic. And I was never really an emotional guy before I had kids. That'll that'll change. Yeah, yeah change for you. sure. And then we did a retreat. Was it a re uh, was like last, last year, year, right? Up in Galena. I, like <clears throat> I did. Oh. We had uh, yeah. Lindsay and Brooke with the Restoration Project. They came. Those up. two are amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So They'll make anybody cool. cry. Yeah, and, and laugh and smile. But and so it's like I knew they were going to bring a ton of value to our team. I didn't know specifically what they were going to cover. Um, I just said, "Do your thing," you know. And uh, we started to talk about something it was like what are you like, what are you most afraid of as far as like working as hard as you're working what is it that you're afraid of like is it disappointment is it this and it's like they broke me yeah they, well they yeah we <laughs> they all me. i was literally crying like a baby i mean it was no and i don't mean was, to be like well, he was we all were crying right i mean it so. all it broke because it was really vulnerable about what like what are your deepest fears yeah. right and uh, when you, yeah, you bring that stuff to yeah. the surface. Mine was failure. It's like, I don't want to fail. And that's been the baseline of everything I've yeah. done professionally in my life is like, if I'm going to set out to do it, I will not accept failure. Yeah. Mine's and, pain, experiencing pain. You know, I've had some, lost my mom a few years ago mm -hmm. and pain, sitting in pain for me mm -hmm. is just really hard. And so, um, yeah. So, I mean, they brought that out of, and our whole team, if I can't recommend that enough, taking, if you have a team, so we <clears> talk <throat> more about leadership and, you know, in our podcast and running a team and what that means, getting out of your normal, you know, eight to five or your work um, environment, really getting to know the people. And we love our team. We, yeah. we like being around them outside of work, but we've had some really vulnerable moments and it's made us Stronger. For yeah. Them. Brings us well, together. And shout out to Restoration Project. They're amazing. Yeah. I've gone to a couple of events and. Yeah. It's, it's worth every penny that you spend to get them into your organization, whether it's for two hours or a day or multiple days. We did a two day retreat and they came and they were the first stop along the way. Yeah. And it was the perfect catalyst for our, our retreat. You know, we, number one, Everybody, including myself, <clears throat> we're on ground level as far as yeah. being very honest and, and open with one another and what makes us tick and what gets us up in the morning. And it's amazing when you start talking about your vulnerabilities, no matter who it's in front of, um, it's 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 real. Yeah. And, they, and they brought it out. <laughs> and I think our team, not think, I know our team was much better and much more solidified because of those conversations we had. They were 100%. It really set the tone for the day. Had we not done that, I think it would have been harder to kind of break through those walls and really talk authentically yeah. about what we want to do and grow. So yeah, we were all very, very vulnerable. About six months ago, I was on Instagram and there was this quote that came across and I just had to laugh and shake my head. It was something along the lines of, um, 
it was like, a, like not a mafia quote, but it was like a very like aggressive business leadership approach where it was like a true leader never lets their team see them uh, express emotion or vulnerabilities. I'm like, well, there goes that. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Oops." laughs> Everybody thinks I'm weak and susceptible <laughs> to uh, getting taken advantage of. That is of. what yeah. they say about you now. There's yeah. like, they're like, like big, big oh, gonna, is he going to cry right again? Please, yeah. I mean, God. get to it when I get to it. Cry baby. <laughs> we bring <laughs> tissues to every meeting just yeah. in case. And then just throw out the second grade insults like cryly <laughs> Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been called that. That's I, maybe yeah. that's why I'm like, I will not cry because I will not be <laughs> yeah. known to that nickname. Yeah. <laughs> now that's your new name. So you want to talk about being vulnerable. Um, we're going to do something here in just a second with one of our new products that might make you feel a little vulnerable. I don't know how often you put stuff on your face that's going to make you beautiful. Never. Okay. So we have some more products. We've been showing off some of our products from the Ann and Ellis shop, which you can find at annandellis.com and ashtonhillfarm.com. We have a shop section. So it's it's not a brick and mortar store. It is um, a virtual shop for all things um, wedding um, related. So just fun things you're going to need the day of for men and women. Um, things that will be useful on your wedding day, uh, fun gifts, um, favors, all that kind of stuff. So the products that I brought today, and we like to try things out uh, so that, you know, we haven't tried all these things. We know that people use them and and they're great, but we're going to try them out. So the first thing we're going to try, and we're all going to try it. John's going to do it too. Yep, perfect. These are the Crystal Collagen Gold Powder Eye Masks. I see a lot of people, men and women, wearing these. The morning of, so I guess this is especially great. The morning of, it's going to take the puffiness out from underneath your eyes, um, really make you look good. So we're going to put these on and see what we think about how they feel. And then John's actually going to wear wear a set. Yeah, because yeah. I actually have some puffiness. I've been burning the candle at both ends on a, I, a project. So I get it. <clears throat> I get it. I uh, I look at pictures of myself when I'm smiling, and there's. Oh. Wrinkles for days. Yeah, it is part Sharpe. of it. Sharpay. <laughs> Not a Sharpay. What, what age did you notice a, a difference? A couple years ago. It's like, right? These. Yeah. I don't know. That's, but you know, yeah. whatever, man. No, I'm gotta, down. I just. got to age gracefully. I know. Or you don't have to. <laughs> I know, right? <clears throat> okay. So. Okay, so I've never done this. So do I pull well, out this little dish? The dish, mine are not. Sticking to, ooh, there's a little liquid in there, so just be ready for that. Oh, okay, I lost one. Mine didn't stick to the dish, so they stuck to the paper, so we're just going to. All right, Riley, I just got to, I'll get mine out, and you can fish yours so out. Which... Oh, they're very slippery. Mm. Oh, my gosh. This slippery is sucker. All right, that's, a you little get... s grosser than I had maybe imagined <laughs> when I said yes. Crystal collagen gold. still got to do it. Okay, okay, here we so... go. Oh, it feels good, though. <clears throat> I can't, I don't have a mirror. But yeah, I can't really see. Very, very slippery. All right. There. Let me see how you're putting them on here. I don't know if that's right. Ooh, I kind of feel like I got it in my eyeball. See how I'm going up. Okay, so it just it just kind of hangs. Yeah. You right. Can press it to your face. Did I? Did I? Does that look okay? Sure. Looks great. I okay. think you did yours the opposite way of how I did mine, but I don't know which is the right or wrong way. Looks like the start of a gold dust. You gotta press. Costume. Press. Remember the remember gold dust on WWF? Yeah. Mine's like in my eyeball. Press yours. Sticking oh. up. Press it down further. Whoops. Yours isn't sticking. Okay. This there we go. Now we're good. Yeah. Kind of the the cold is kind of refreshing. Yeah. yeah. Feels good. The reason I agreed to this, just FYI, is because I have a four year old daughter, yeah. and so at some point she's going to be oh, putting yeah. makeup on me. So I might as well just, just get, get over yeah, the. That's a real thing. So I will see. Uh, People wearing these the morning of, you know, so John probably going to have a, his on about an hour. I don't know how long we're going to keep ours on. I like it. I feel, yeah. I mean, it it's feels. Kind of calming. Right? Yours is way low. Yours is, is it? Yeah, it's way low. Get I it think, up under the I eye bag. I think it's supposed to kind of, yeah, there you go. Yep. Better? It does. You do look like a professional. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> gold dust tag team partner. I'll make you have it to for Google you. Gold I thought it would make you look feminine, but it makes you look. It's kind of aggressive. Tough. Yeah. yeah. It actually it? looks for like, yeah. like, is he going to hurt us? This right is now? the 2023 tough guy look. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Come into the ring. You're fool's like, gold. <laughs> <laughs> and no eye bag. <laughs> look at how beautiful oh, I am. Like an 18 year old. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. What's the line from uh, Anchorman? Hey, everybody. Come see how good I look. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel it working. Like, 
it it's yeah. like tingling. Is that what you're Yes. Doing? And if, yeah. if nothing else, if it doesn't take any puffy, it feels good. I mean, it just feels the cooling part feels does. really good. So we'll leave those on for a minute. So okay. those um, are for purchase. That would be great. I think those would be great to put in like a little gift for your bridesmaids. Agreed. Or even your groomsmen, two gentlemen trying them out. Um, that way when they get to the venue in the morning before makeup or as they're getting ready, they can, everybody can put these on. So if I okay. bought these and wore them around the house, you want to do it at night or in the morning? Well, you probably want to do it in the morning when you first get up because that's when your eye bags are going to be puffy yeah. and you're trying to get them down. So you're going to want to wear it in the morning. But if you like the way it feels, you could sleep with it on yeah. probably. I hate waking up with a puffy eye bag. Right. So maybe you could try sleeping with them on and see if you get no yeah. eye bags. Yeah. Um, these are also really fun. So a lot of couples write their own vows. And a lot. you just need something that's not too big to hold during, if you're reading your vows, um, these are the perfect size. So his and hers, and you buy them separately. So if you're buying hers and hers, his and his, they don't come as a set. So, um, or you can buy his and hers, um, but they're the perfect size. I'll actually open one up to hold and actually read out of, um, and has plenty of pages to actually write your vows. And then it's in something like I've seen people just print it off on a piece of paper and it gets tossed. Yep. I'm like, no, you, those are your vows. You should keep them. So then I feel like my eye bag thing's sliding. You're good. Um, I was sliding a little bit. Was it? Oh my gosh, I'm talking too aggressively. I didn't notice it. I just need to be resting right now. Those eye bags, they have my a mind of their own. Um, but then you can keep this and, okay. you know, right? So you, you can read your vows later. So you're, you'd are you be more inclined to keep this cute little I would one. need to... Use that, but I would have to type something out and then type it, print it, cut it, and then put it on there oh, because my penmanship is that of a four-year-old on a good day. It is? I don't oh, know if I've ever seen your handwriting. There's a reason for that. Because it's I write, I write. So even starting in like kindergarten, I hold, you have a pen. Uh, <clears throat> I'll show you how I hold a pen. A pen. Are you? You're going to think differently okay. of me from this point forward. I might have to show. get out of here. I'm walking out. <clears throat> it's really odd. Now I have to... Thank you. So this is the normal way, right? Yeah. Okay, so I hold it like this. What? Yeah. Well, no wonder your handwriting. <laughs> I remember my mom That's telling my kindergarten okay. teacher, like, so are you going to fix that? And he's like, just let him do I'm his thing. thing. So. Yeah, I mean, it's most kids, it's so hard to correct. Like yeah. you're... Yeah, this feels so odd to me. Does anybody else out there write really funky? But yeah, this your is... Your middle finger is up really high and you hold it. Yeah. I'm better off just typing. Let me see how I hold it. Yeah, the normal way. I have the good normal, I have way. real actually really good handwriting. I'm not I mean my handwriting. I'm always jealous of those that have really great handwriting. Dang, I didn't know that about you. Interesting. Oh, I, I that is that an I, interesting way to hold it. I think I have pretty good handwriting. You do? Yeah. The part of the reason was in uh grade school <clears throat> they had this thing where you had to write out a sentence and the worst person that wrote it did like the worst job, I think. Oh my right. God. Like <laughs> and so I would go home and practice. And we're like, I'm not, hey, I'm not doing whatever. That is actually makes me kind of sad because some people have like issues with like. It's a good way to quantify like, results, man. Well, Let's it was, go. It was the 90s, you know? Yeah, that was the wild <laughs> anything, west. Of anything teaching. went. Anything went. I was slow running. I mean, like running, like not, I'm not athletic, very, I mean, I am, I love being athletic and doing out athletic things, but <laughs> my gym teacher would like, uh, there were a couple other, it just wasn't the fastest kid. So she would like chase you in gym and tell you it was, it was the boogeyman <laughs> coming. I hated gym and how, you know, how embarrassing you're the like slow chubby kid who's getting chased. <laughs> what, what did Brian say to you about a bear, like if a bear was chasing you, like he didn't believe it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so he was like. <laughs> So we were talking about how fast I could run and he was, if like a bear was chasing me and he said I would fall down. I'm like, you think I would just fall? Like I can't actually keep myself upright. I'm going to trip. He's like, you would just fall down. I'm like, I, I can run. I mean, I may not be, yeah. you know, Flojo, but I can run. I'm not going to just collapse to the ground. Because when, I'm when is the last time either one of you have like all out sprinted? <laughs> <laughs> like as fear? fast as you can go for as long yeah. just sprint never um i i don't know my my brother so he's super into working out 
And he told me like the best way to lose weight if you're trying to do that is to sprint. Yes. So and then 100%. and then do your workout. Or you could die. And, and then I did the sprint and I'm like, I think I'm just gonna do the workout. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that same thing. So it's like interval training. Yeah. So I would use a treadmill and uh it was about a year ago. Um so you would start off, I would always start off with like an incline on the treadmill for 10 minutes, just kind of walking, getting everything warmed up. I feel like I'm sliding. I know. Back, they do sliding. slide a little. Um, You're not sliding, John. You're staying here. I think yeah, I'm stable, man. I, dude, I'm, I dialed, I'm, I'm dialed in. Yeah. I, mine's coming off. How do I look? Whoa. Uh, let's let's go Magic. to cam- camera three over here. Oh, uh, really good. How about me? Oh, my God. Way younger. Good? Yeah, way. It actually does look less puffy than the other side. Good. To- I'm it's it's like that conversation we were having before we started is like, did it something really change or did we just really want to believe it? <laughs> yeah. believe, it. <laughs> believe it. If you believe it. It felt really good. But anyways, I was on the treadmill and so I would increase the speed to as fast as it could go and then you sprint for 30 seconds and then you jump off the treadmill and you just put your left and right foot like over it, like you yeah. straddle it. But you better hope you have your shit together when you get back on that treadmill when it's going as fast as it can. Because if you fall on your face in front Done of that. 50 people at the gym, you're never going back. So there's been several times where you're double checking to make sure your shoes are tied, right. you're good to go, your pants are nice and tight. No, because really? once you hit that thing, you're whoa. But it is, it is a kick ass workout. Just 30 seconds to 45 seconds is what I would do. Zero incline though. And just boom, 30 seconds, rest 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Rest thirty seconds. It's fa- uh, it's a fantastic. Wow. Workout. I um I when you said sprinted, I don't think I've sprinted in. A, you should try I it mean, sometime. Just go to a track, go to like Linmar, and just run like, a one hundred meter that's, sprint. And just see what happens. I should try it. Okay, I will def. I will do it. I'm not. Vit- no one's gonna know about it. It'll be at night. When in you the get dark. to a certain age, how oft like. Think about it. Unless like, when's the last time you've been a full on chased sprint? by a bear? So I'll see if I fall down or not. We can sure. test Brian's theory. Knee pads, a helmet. I did. So when you said that about the treadmill, I fell walking on a treadmill, um, and not so not going fast. You want to talk about the most painful burn? Ooh, how did you do that? I don't remember how I actually fell down. How did I fall? So you were on the treadmill walking and you fell. Well, was I trying to get off? Or on. Didn't stop all the some, way. Something happened. Okay. It was a tricky move I was trying to do. But I fell and my knee hit the belt. And I mean, the way it burned the skin mm. off, right? Mm. Those, that That's, type of an injury. I hate those. I mean, it didn't even ever bleed. But while it healed, it felt like my knee was going to explode. Yeah. So be very careful because that type of a burn is... I can not even fun. still feel it. No. So I, Got to tread lightly for sure. Uh, my daughter was... <laughs> That's nice. Uh, <laughs> dude, I'm on it today. Yeah, you you are. are. Rapid fire. It's, a, it's those gold, your gold dust or whatever you are. <laughs> Google gold dust. I'm telling you, you are. It sounds like a stripper partner. name. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a great, he was a Dusty Rhodes. I think it was his son uh, who played gold dust. I love professional wrestling back in the day. The, dude, I, that, they were the best. Raw's War. Oh, oh, back in the Stone Cold. Sable. Yeah. WWE. Oh, Yeah. Oh my God, that was the best. We should just do, do a WWE podcast. Oh, sure. all about the different the, wrestlers. Yeah. Who was the guy who would eat George the Animal Steel? He would like bite the ring thing and mm-hmm. like, tear it. And he was just crazy. And yeah, that was the best. <laughs> oh, yeah, I loved that. I watched that. Hulk Hogan, obviously, of course, was great. Miss Elizabeth, was that his? Yep. Uh, that, was, was that, Ma- that was Macho Man. Oh, that was Macho Man Thanks. Randy Savage. His, his, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so Ashton was telling me about a workout that's called, is it like 12, 3, 30? So 12 incline, speed three, 30 minutes on the treadmill. So okay. it's not running, it's walking, but it's like at a crazy incline. That's supposed to be, I think it's 12, 3, 30. I could, that's hard. I could be getting that incline wrong. Incline all but, the way yeah. up, even speed walking, man, oh man. Yeah. She said that's really, really tricky. That's yeah. a tricky one. So today's podcast is going to be kind of fun. We might not always agree on this podcast today, which would be, we'll see. Maybe we'll we see. will. Cause we haven't, I, the, I came up with these and we haven't discussed this ahead of time as far as who feels which way. And again, um, it's things that you should or shouldn't maybe DIY at your wedding. Um, we have a lot of clients who like to DIY things because they yeah. like to do it. They're yeah. crafty. They, um, have family members who want to do things. 
again, where we're coming from is from love and caring about your experience and knowing some things that we have seen gone well and things that haven't, things clients wish they wouldn't have DIY'd and had hired done just from our experience. You can DIY whatever you Do want whatever to. You want. But we're just letting you know, here's things that we have seen go well. We might have yeah. strong opinions about some things and some things we might be a little wishy-washy. And so you can take that for uh, or what you want to. So, And we'll check in with John at the end of the podcast to see how his beautiful face is looking. I've noticed a lot of our clips that tend to get a lot of views on YouTube shorts. They're the ones that get the most comments about <laughs> differing opinions. I love it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Damn, you spend some time on a response. Okay, cool. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that I will say is when you guys have a strong opinion about something, I think the the thing I like the most is that it makes others think about what they truly think about the topic. Mm -hmm. Sure. So whether you agree or not, it's helping people find what they're passionate about. Or how they passionately feel sure. about a, a bouquet, a bouquet toss. Yeah, or yeah. no, whatever. absolutely. Or kids at weddings. Well, I had all of our cousins and everything. It was a great time. It's right. like they dig their yeah. heels yeah. into. Like, dude, okay. you're wrong. It's like chill. You do you. We are all, that is that should be one of our taglines. Do what you want to do. Just sit, you know, we're just here to yeah. throw some wisdom because we've done this a lot and um, nothing set in stone. Yeah. Right. Just, I, th I, I think when you're when you're planning a wedding in today's world, it's aggressive because it's like marketing has never been at its highest options, resources, social media accounts that you can follow, websites you can follow. Like it's so aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so here we come with a podcast that talks about weddings and all of the moving parts and pieces that make up what we would like to believe is a successful wedding. It really is just things that we've encountered. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, I think opinions, it's like, if your opinion is based on experience, that's one thing. But if your opinions are just based on what you think might happen, then that's another. And that's sure. not really where we're coming from. No, so. we're coming from experience. We've walked in the shoes. We've been there. We've seen it all. The first thing, so I won't tell you my opinion, you go first, uh, like a tent, an outdoor tent or lighting. Should you DIY that or no? I would say hell no. I would say hell to the no as well on that. And, you know, finding a reputable company that really knows what they're doing on the tent installation side of things is tough. And so if you find one and there's, and there's, there's one around here for sure. Like R and D events, they're incredible. Like they're true professionals. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They've got great tents, um, high level of installation. They're going to make sure that if wind comes, like wind comes out of nowhere or rain comes out of nowhere, they're going to help kind of guide you through some worst case scenarios. Yeah. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, about 10 years ago, probably. It's been a while. I think it was 10 years ago. I was DJing a wedding. I won't say where, but it was uh, outside of Cedar Rapids. It was a tent. And they did the tent themselves. So th so they, they rented a tent, but they did it. They, and they, they set installed. it up. Okay. It, was, it was a big tent. Like okay. I showed up to DJ. I'm like, Wow. It's crazy they installed this thing themselves. And so it had sidewalls all the way around. And they had tables and chairs and floor length linens and candles, like pillar candles, beautiful floral, a ton of table setting. Like just it was, it was incredible. And the ceremony was over the hill, down in like this valley. Uh that was about an hour. That that was happening uh, as I was kind of getting, I forgot the scenario. It, it was it was about to happen when I was getting there. So they were off on their own because I didn't start for like two, three more hours for whatever reason. And I'm setting up. I get done setting up. And all of a sudden this storm, like this wind comes out of nowhere. They forgot to zip or clip the sidewalls, not only together, but they didn't fasten them down at the very bottom. So this wind was coming and the sidewalls were just going woof, woof. And it was knocking into oh. all of the surround, the outside tables. And I kid you not, it was throwing all of the glass, like, like it was just oh. annihilating these tables. I'm the only one in the tent. Oh. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Everybody's going to think I like lost my mind and I'm like, I'm going right. to sabotage this right. wedding. But obviously they knew the wind and the, and the rain and stuff. 
because that's what it was. Ceremony was outside. Cocktail hour was in like a barn. And then this was just for the reception uh, or like for the dinner and dancing. So nobody was in there and they had a wedding planner. So I called the wedding planner right away. I said, you need to get up here. I don't know how to do these walls or whatever. It was a disaster. So like 10 of their outside tables, we're like ruined. everything on the table were ruined. Water from the vases of the floral was everywhere. So again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying like, that's what happens when you do it yourself, wow. but it's remembering every little detail when you're outside. And if you don't do that for a living, I mean, that is that I agree. I would say tents and lighting, there are major safety issues when it comes to installing that kind of stuff. Someone, someone could get hurt oh if God, you don't yes. do it correctly. If you're hanging lighting or I mean, we're talking um, things like that or string lights, um, you should have a professional doing that. Um, and then especially tents. It's they're heavy. They're people will eventually be underneath it if yep. if you didn't do it correctly. Um, and you know insurance and I mean yeah, it's just to me yep. I can't think of any way to say well you could if you nope I mean, unless you do it for a living, and then it just happens to be your wedding and you want to do your own. But mm -hmm. it's no. interesting too when you see they don't happen much around here, but like clear tents. Yeah, they're really cool. They're really expensive, but they're incredible to be in and look at. But they're kind of like a greenhouse. Yeah. I mean, if that sun is shining through and that heat has nowhere to go, so you have to bring in like air conditioning sure. to, to bring that in. I've done one wedding. It was incredible that that was exactly the case. So that air conditioning unit was like trying to keep up all day. But as soon as that sun set, then that temperature could finally catch up yeah. to make it comfortable. But candles were melting. I mean, it was, Ooh, it was yeah. just, again, well, that's that the reality. Well, that had to be really uncomfortable to be in that. You feel like you're boiling in there, yeah, <laughs> steaming yourself. Thank God. It's like the sun went down right as cocktail hour was starting and we were good to go. <sighs> okay. Here's the next one. Should you or should you not DIY your own wedding cake? Ooh, I don't see that a ton. I think, again, the majority of clients that I work with, they'll bring in a cake that somebody else does in some capacity, mm -hmm. like a one-tiered cake or you know, an amazing cake that's like six, seven tiers, like tip top cakes. Yeah. I mean, something like Beautiful. that. Um, so I don't, I don't see that a lot. Do you? Um, I, I don't a handful of times I've seen it. So my opinion on that would be my first instinct is to say no, because um, I, I think of any sort of food item, anything with frosting, anything that's a fragile food item, which a cake absolutely is, is just mm -hmm. that's anything that's susceptible to temperature um, transportation issues should be a no, right? Because it's just a worry you don't need. Um, it's just a concern you don't need that to have that day. They are fragile. They are sensitive. Um, if you've got a hot day, whatever. Now, if you have a family member or friend who makes cakes and they want to do that for you, that's fine. But you doing it yourself or, you know, again, just take that worry out of it. My my instinct is to, to say no, under some circumstances, it might be okay. It's just a lot easier to have somebody make it yeah, for you. Yeah. And then the, the, the transportation side of things, mm -hmm. I've watched again, Adam with Tip Top. Oh I mean, gosh. there is such an art to transporting that cake. I mean, I don't care what kind of cake it is. It's like just getting it from point A to point B is worth its weight. It's always terrifying. <laughs> getting it there safely is worth its weight. Yeah, gold, owning a sure. dessert company. I mean, you're always stressed out about the transportation. And until it was set up on the stand and you're like, you know, you walk away and it's all good. Um, or sometimes the decorations are the way it's frosted, like it holding up yeah. actually. Like if you did a cream cheese frosting, that's a whole nother ball yep. game, right? So I would say may, that's a maybe we kind of feel about that, but we don't see it a lot, but we do have some people. One well, well, more quick story. Sure. Just, it just works out perfectly. Yeah. It's like anything you're throwing at, it's like, oh, I got a story got for a that. a cake story? So this is about five years ago. This is the one and only time that I've seen this. So we were at a venue. And we were in, in, in the middle of the dance floor is where the cake was at because they were doing introductions and then the cake cutting. Okay. And so I'm introducing the wedding party. It's a big wedding. I mean, it was like super lively and everybody's getting into it. The wedding party was having a lot of fun with their intros and crowds going crazy. They had a photographer and a cinematographer. And uh, cinematographer was like really getting into like moving around and doing all these things. So I'm introducing a bridesmaid and a groomsman and they come out. And the cinematographer is facing the couple. So his back was to the cake. No. And he's backing up, getting the shot. Stop, stop. Just don't finish the story. And it's like a beautiful four or five tier cake. And he's backing up into the cake. And I'm in the middle of announcing, I'm like, dude, 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 dude. Boom. 
hits the cake, cake just goes all over oh. the dance floor. So they had candles on the table, the cake table. Oh, that shatters everywhere. So this cake is just completely smashed on the dance floor. And the whole crowd is like, oh. And so bride and groom were like second uh, from like two couples from coming up. So they had no idea it went on. Oh, no. And so I introduced the couple and, and they didn't notice it. And they're coming in and they both look at it. I'm like, shit, we have, we, we do cake cutting next. Like, how's this going to go? And the crowd just goes, eat it, eat <laughs> it. And they all started chanting, eat it. And so both of them just scooped a handful Love of the cake them. off the dance floor and just, just fed themselves. Them. And that it. was good yeah. for them. That was I mean, the only time I've seen that. 600 weddings, I've never seen that. Well, and that's like time. always a fear. Somebody's going to knock over. The, and that poor cinematographer probably just wanted to just curl up in I a ball and die. terrible. Because, you know, listen, it wasn't his. No. Well, I mean, was, just was he the one that did it? Sure. But it wasn't malicious. It's no. like, dude, he's trying to get the shot. He's in it. He just maybe wasn't quite aware, like, and should a cake table be in the middle of a dance that's, floor? I could argue that's maybe not yeah, the best place for it, especially if there's kids there and they're running around during cocktail. What are yeah. your thoughts of on kids being at weddings? <laughs> <laughs> that's just another reason why. No. Oh, I had a wedding I was setting up when I owned my dessert company. It was actually here in Iowa City. And there were kids running around and then, I mean, I, nobody was paying attention and I kept kind of saying, you know, I need to step back. I need to step back. And I'm setting up. And the minute I walked away, I mean, they just, uh, I knew, I, I know 100% they knocked everything over. Yeah. And I'm like, I, you know, can't, yeah can't do anything yeah. about it. But that couple, that's the kind of thing that couples, if you're listening and that kind of stuff happens, you roll with it and you make it fun because I always think in life in general, I think those kind of things, like those make the best fun memories rather than oh, absolutely. like, if they had stood there and acted mad yes. or pit, like they made it fun and funny. Yeah, no, that couple Love was it. amazing. They were amazing Love the them. whole time. And I mean, did they want that to happen? No. Did it happen? Yes. Did they make something fun out of it that they'll remember for and a their, long time? Their guests will remember that they were just cool with it and had fun. <laughs> yeah. They scooped it up and then got it off the dance floor and uh, off they went. I've seen that a lot with um, wedding party introductions where the wedding party just, they come off a party bus and they're just completely hammered and they'll do introductions and there's a head table and they'll like... Um, when they throw the football, you've seen mm -hmm. that, like where the bridesmaid goes out and then he throws the football and the bridesmaid catches it and then she accidentally runs into something. Yeah. They ran into the table that it was the head table and like half of the centerpieces and the plates and everything just crashed on the dance floor. It's <laughs> That's like, not a good end. Here don't we do go. That. It's going to be a party tonight, baby. Don't do that. We had that something like that happen at Ashton Hill. I wasn't there for the wedding, but a somebody smashed a chair and like they were trying to do something funny like that. And I'm like, no, like that's just not yeah. any sort of intros that involve running into things or like f acts of physical, like, it's no, the football. Not. it's always when you have somebody sprinting in a dress or a suit and they go to <sighs> catch it. <laughs> it's not going to end well. Does not end well. No. Um, okay. So we're st we're sticking with the food, uh, area of food in your wedding. So what about snacks? Um, other desserts like cookies, cupcakes, things like that. How do you feel about DIYing that kind of I stuff? I see a lot of cookies that are made by a grandparent yeah. who has like her famous chocolate chip cookie. I think that's awesome. I do too. And I think the, yeah. that's one area that the I would say yes. So you could DIY some of those things like snack mix, popcorn during oh, the yeah, day, whatever, sure. and cookies. I would say my only time to say no is if you are you know trying to get like a lot, you know, if you say, well, we need 500 cookies. I mean, like that's kind of a lot yes. of pressure um, on somebody. And then again, going back to anything that's fragile, chocolate chip cookies, they can, they're fine, For but sure. anything frosted, anything that's could melt like chocolate covered strawberries or whatever, let's not do that. Well, hiring a company to handle those things, they're going to be more involved in the quantities. Mm-hmm. Knowing what Not running eat. out. You yeah. could think because you've never done a wedding before, I'm going to make all these cookies, all of these things. You either made way too much, now mm -hmm. you're going to have extra for six months and you have to do what you need to do with them. Or you can work with a company and they're going to say, hey, listen, here's the ratio. Yeah, I agree. But I would say yes. I would say you can do those things yourself. Just keep those those things in mind. Um, the next thing is food during the day. So breakfast, lunch, um, as you're at your venue, you're getting ready. Um, what do you think about that? Should you have it catered? Should you do it yourself? I see a lot of uh, couples uh, delegating somebody to go pick up Jimmy John's or yeah. Brugger's, Brugger's bagels. Yeah, I would say 
that and to me that's kind of DIY. Like you don't yeah, have to have it sure. catered. You just go pick it up or make your sandwiches or you know if if you have and these things all apply too. I have a lot of clients that like they have family that want to help. And there's great areas to have them help. Say, hey, could you be in charge of bringing us breakfast and lunch? Yeah. Give somebody that job. Um, they'll feel like they're being helpful um, and give them something to do. And other areas, they don't need to help. And no matter how nervous you are, eat. You eat. need to eat. If you're going to drink any alcohol, especially, and even if you're not, you've got to have some nutrition. So important. Yeah. Lots so of important. good protein and make sure you're eating and staying hydrated. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So yeah, you can do that stuff yourself. Um, you'll know how I feel about this one after we talked about the garbage bag salad, but should you DIY the dinner for your reception? I'm going to just chime in here real quickly that the answer is absolutely not. Now, again, are there exceptions to every rule? Every wedding's different? Yes. But the traditional wedding, yep. the average wedding I'm talking about, no way. I, again, it comes down to quantity, quality, variety. No way. Who's managing the food? Who's making sure that it's staying at a temperature that it should stay at, who's managing um, when it runs out and needs to be replenished, who's handling the leftovers. Cleaning it up afterwards. It's a ton packaging. I mean, of work. It's a ton of work. Most people don't know, have the equipment to do it properly. Most people um, don't have the right cooking facilities to do it. Uh, the cleaning up, I mean, then someone's working during your whole event, uh, it's just not a good situation. We don't even allow it anymore. Not allowed. And why don't you allow it? Uh, for just the reasons of how bad we have seen it go, it was just like we don't allow it and for safety and liability. I was going to say, somebody gets food poisoning, mm -hmm. it's really easy to point the finger at the venue. Yeah. We'll we let them in. say absolutely. And we even say it can't also cannot be like a drop off by a caterer. Yeah. So. The only things we allow dropped off are like late night snack, like pizzas, right? But if it's for dinner, the caterer has to be licensed, insured, and has to stay to serve. And again, there the there's just because we have seen firsthand the issues that come if you don't don't have that in yeah. place. I'll see some venues that are like, we'll let anybody do whatever they want. And that's the magic of our venue. It's like good luck with Bad. that. It's not a good situation. Um, how about guest favors? Can you DIY your guest favors? Would that be a yay or nay like for you? Like take home? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I, Same. I see that all the time. Same. I would think that if if you want something creative to do or you're looking to save a little money, you should definitely do that. Yeah. One thing that uh, Dave Kendall did, bar manager Dave, Yeah. he went to Iowa Coffee Roasters right outside of Marion. Cannot recommend them enough. And he came up with, he worked with them to come up with uh, their own blend of coffee. Mm-hmm. That's right. All organic. It's the best coffee you're going to have, period. And so they put them in like little mason jars that that's right. made, I think, like a pot of coffee. Coffee, yeah. And then their date and name and stuff. And I think they had that. a dark roast, a, a medium roast, a light roast. And that was a really cool yeah. take-home gift. Little personalized yeah. things. Yeah. People love yeah. to take home coffee, alcohol, food, like a little bag with like a little treat in it at the end of the night. People love that. You know, they're eating it the minute they get in the car and they're leaving. Um, just anything personalized that they can take home or use later. The floral arrangements off tables. Yes. I, oh my gosh. I, I get asked to make that announcement all the time at weddings. People take them. Be yeah. sure you let people know to take home a centerpiece yes. on their way out. Yes. So they don't end up in the garbage, right? Okay. Um, should you DIY your own music? And Ooh. I would say not just your music, but the DJ element of the day, because those go hand in hand, right? It's not just music that a DJ would provide. It's the MC. So should you DIY the MC role and music? We'll combine the two. I mean, hiring a quality DJ isn't the cheapest thing in the world. And so I don't blame couples for seeking alternatives in regards to how they can save money and still have music playing and uh, hooking a microphone up to a speaker. And would you be able to do those things on a very low budget? Absolutely. Are you going to have the same experience or, or will your guests have the same experience um, in comparison to a professional, experienced, passionate DJ? Absolutely not. There's no way. And that sounds very easy for me to say as a DJ, I get it. But the fact of the matter is a lot of the clients that come to me wanting to have a consultation or seeking out my services, a lot, of, not a majority, but a, a large percentage have come to me being like, hey, 
we were at a wedding and they did everything themselves. And we didn't know when the first dance was happening. It just kind of happened and we were outside and we missed it for the toast. They didn't have a microphone, so we couldn't hear it. The ceremony, they were playing off of an iPhone that was via Bluetooth to a speaker and somebody called the phone during the ceremony. Now the phone was, so it's a million variables that go into a successful event as a DJ, as a host, as an MC. Can you go on to Spotify and type in wedding reception dance floor playlist? Absolutely. And are you going to see a lot of songs on there that maybe I play as a DJ? Sure. But are they going to be in the same order? Will Spotify and their algorithms be able to recognize the peaks and valleys of the night right. to know what to play next? Obviously not, at least not yet. Um, so there's so much that goes into what a DJ is supposed to do at a wedding that's well beyond music. To me, music is 30%. Great. The remaining 70%, it's all the intangibles. It's curating that guest experience. And if you want to do it yourself, just understand... <sighs> I don't know. You're just not going to run at peak performance, yeah, just I, my opinion. I agree. I think where people get confused is they think, like you said, it's the 30% music, the 70%, everything else. They're like, yeah, I could, I have a really good speaker. I could plug my phone in, right? Why would I pay sure. a couple thousand dollars for a DJ? It's like you're missing the whole point, right? So it's it's less about the music. It's more about the guidance. It's more about the quality of the equipment, especially speakers, people who I've seen who have tried to do things on their own. So even if we're talking about music for a ceremony, they have no way to control when the music stops, starts, if it loops, things like that. Their equipment generally isn't good enough to be effective outdoors mm -hmm. um, or to handle issues with a venue's sound Prop, right. We have a huge space. You can't have one speaker in our space. No, it doesn't not even, work. Not even close. It doesn't work. So you've got to have a professional sound system. And then the communication and the, you know, again, when our speech is happening, letting guests what's, know what's going on. So you're missing the point of 70% mm -hmm. of what a DJ is doing is the having the great equipment, knowing how to control sound and any sort of issues, and then guiding your guests. And then the rest of it is, sure. is the music. So I... I would strongly say no, unless yeah. you, you know, are a DJ yourself. And then even then, somebody has to be running it. Somebody has to be intuitively knowing what to play. And yep. it's a, that's if, a tough if one. If you're hiring a DJ, you're hiring somebody to curate an experience. Mm -hmm. And for the person that you're hiring to curate the experience, they need to be two, three, four, five steps ahead of what's currently happening to ensure that the next chapter in that book makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and it's when you really, for, for, for those that are watching or listening that they're, they're planning a wedding or you, you just got engaged and you're just ready to start planning a wedding. When somebody asks you like, and if it's a vendor, like what, explain your wedding. Like, what do you want out of it? 99% of people are going to say, I just want it to be fun. What I would challenge you all to do is define exactly what that means to yeah. you. Okay. So I want, I want to have fun. I want people to have fun. Okay, great. So does that mean I want people to dance? I want people to enjoy the food. I want people to really uh, be impressed by the venue. I want to have um, great candid moments through photos and video. What is it? And I think if, if you can really slow down and define what it is that you want out of your day, and if you look at this as an investment, like here's what I'm going to put in in the form of money as an investment, here is what I want to get out of it. The more concise you can be with yourself as a couple, with your family, as far as what you want to get out of it, the easier it's going to be to figure out your budget, to figure out your guest count, to figure out what you want to do yourself, to figure out where you want to spend your time. Is it worth the investment? So instead of thinking of it as expenses, it's investment. It is an investment. Absolutely. And if you even can kind of quantify what you want the day to be like, but the experience leading up to it. I mean, I, the thing that breaks my heart the most, who was I just having a conversation with? I, I think it was one of our managers or it was a friend or someone who said that they were talking to a bride and she was like, I just want this day to be over because I'm so sick of all of this. Generally, I see that coming from somebody who's tried to take on too much themselves. Mm. So you have to think about the experience leading up to it. I want our couples to go into the day like I've got, and that's why we advocate for hi hiring professionals because yep. we want to say, I've hired you. This is your piece. I know you've got it. So they can actually enjoy 
not only the day, but the planning process. When you have too many things on your shoulders, you're making the cookies and the cake and you're providing the music and you have to DIY all the centerpieces. You're, I can promise you, you're going to be way more stressed out and you may not enjoy Oh yeah, the process. Sure. And you may get to the day and just wish it was over. And no, come on. I don't want that for you. Melissa so. and her yeah. cousin made all of our centerpieces for our wedding. And that was one of the biggest regrets she had. <laughs> She's like, why the hell did I spend hours <sighs> yeah. upon hours upon hours? I forgot what they were. They were, is it manzanilla branches? Is yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, is that how you pronounce yeah. it? So we're like, this is 2012, but you put them in like glass beads in a cylinder. I mean, mm-hmm. Uh, there's maybe let's just say 25 of them, but I mean, it took her weeks and we had to storm in our basement. Yeah. Then we had to transport them. Yeah. What and if you, what half if you, of them fell over. I don't know. If yeah. you, I mean, people forget about the transporting. What if you drop and break three on the way there? I mean, you're, you know, so even the things that seem easy just generally never are. <laughs> they never are. <laughs> yeah. They just never are. So, you know, all these things, we, we are just opening up this conversation because we want people just to understand what it really looks like. And if, yeah, there are some things that, I mean, we've had some absolute yeses, right? Yep. Go ahead and DIY if you feel like you want to. But for the most part, we would. The, the couples that, that I've too. worked with that have done DIY stuff on their own that have been like uber organized, as an example, a couple of weeks ago, working with a the client, they did a lot of stuff themselves. The room looked fantastic, but they were so organized. So what they did, they, they rented a U-Haul van the one that says like 1995 mm, on it, mm-hmm. like rent me. So they rented that and they bought a bunch of totes, like all weather totes from Menards. I'm talking like 15 or 20 of them. And so they had them all in the tote. They came in the venue. They they decorated the venue the day before, whatever it was, the morning. And then end of night, they just put them all back in totes. They had a cart and they just put everything in the van. And then they kept the van at the venue overnight and they came back and got it. So yep. now that that you're not having to utilize eight different vehicles, not having to bring a trailer, you know, so it was very little money to rent a U-Haul, yeah. at least centralize. If you're going to do a bunch of rentals and like you're set, like if you're going to not do rentals and do a lot of stuff yourself or you're renting things to do yourself, centralize the location mm-hmm. of the setup and the teardown and make sure that all lives in one place. So it's a lot easier to keep track. Yeah, it will. And it'll still be a lot of work for you, right? Still I mean, they had work. to be uber organized and somebody had to be responsible for it. It sounds like they did it well. They did it know? very well. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah. One I, thing I would add to the the DIY um, DJ to think about is, do you want your toasts recorded? Yeah. And right. things like that. And then also a lot of video people will pull audio f- and you want, if you just hired your uncle Doug yeah. <laughs> to do it, he right. might not. Yeah. Anyways. Right. Because so, can you even, so let's say you, you do your own music. How, maybe you guys don't know the answer to this question, but- um, ben Reed, chime in here. How does a cinematographer get sound if, if like, if you don't have the ability to do it through the DJ? Do they have to so do it themselves? They, they actually, when they were here, they gave us great advice because I was asking a lot of these clips, how, are, how do you know? So they pin lapel uh, mics. So they have like a white one okay. that goes on the wedding dress. And then they have like, I think a black one for the, the groom. Mm-hmm. Um but it's actually like a recorder that records to a memory disc and it just is on them sure. recording all day. All day. Okay. So then later they go up, they go back and they sync things. And so like a lot of their videos that went, have gone viral where it's like a moment bef- yeah, between yeah, yeah. the yeah. groom and the bride, those were recording the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So that's they, kind of where the magic happens too. Honestly, yeah. that's, I mean, their most popular clips are like those genuine For moments sure. and you For don't sure. get those. So so you, they can record without a DJ, but a lot of times they like to use your plug into your system yeah. to record. But you were, you're not going to put a microphone on the dad for the whole day, no. right. right? So right. like if he's doing a toast or whatever, that's yeah. where the DJ would that's come in. I, I hear so many stories from cinematographers that I work with at weddings of past weddings they've done when working with the DJ where the DJ will refuse to let the cinematographer plug into their equipment or not know how a cinematographer should plug into their equipment. So like if the cinematographer has a quarter inch cable or an XLR cable or an RCA, whatever you want to use. And the DJ is like, nah, that's going to harm my equipment, man. It's not going to, not going to, not going to work. Um, 
or you can, but I don't know how you do it. So it's, it's really Ooh. important yeah. that again, it just crazy. goes back to the team, man. Like just really making sure you all can work together because it's got to be super stressful for a cinematographer to not have that mm -hmm. ability to work in harmony with somebody like a DJ. Yeah, for sure. There were weddings where I would call the DJ a week or two ahead of time, yeah. could not get a hold of them. And then sounds about right. Yeah. See them at the wedding, yeah. like, hey, try yeah. calling you. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm trying phone. to be as proactive yeah. as possible. Can right. you please help me? You depend on each other. So, yeah. So, so that's just another thing. It's challenging if you're doing your own sound and music. Yeah. It could be really, there's a trickle down effect, right? Of, of what's going to, Going to work well and not work yeah. well. Um, the next thing would be a backdrop. So backdrop for a ceremony. I'm thinking like an mm. archer, an outdoor piece. What are your thoughts on doing that yourself? You better make sure that is uh, secure. Sir, sure. that yeah. would be my biggest concern. Um, I have seen them fall over uh, multiple times. I, I know of a wedding professional that was very, very seriously Absolutely. injured um, by a backdrop. So I would say I have had clients do them themselves. They take a lot of time. They take uh, a, a lot of just energy, bringing it, hauling it, setting it up. Um, we have our venue. You've got to be out that night. So how are you going to get it torn down? And then it's a major safety issue. So I would say under, unless under rare circumstances, I would say that's a no in my book. Do not do they're, your They're backdrop. cost effective to rent. They're not. They're going to be installed by a professional. And then if you're adding floral to it, you better hope that can hold the weight. Again, it can hold the weight, that it's not top heavy, that it's secured down at the base. And then if you are going to transport it back, that it's collapsible, mm -hmm. or at least it has, you know, the ability to unscrew and break down into several different pieces. But again, for what those things cost. Yeah. The investment's usually a, a couple hundred dollars. That. You're, that would be a no brainer yeah. for me to have someone else take charge of that. For sure. For sure. The next thing is, should you, and when we DIY your own ceremony, so should you run your own ceremony without a wedding professional. Um, some people will say, you know, they have a friend that's going to help with it, but a, run it yourself without someone who's a w trained wedding professional. I don't see how you could do it. I really don't. No. Again, people are going to get sick of me always using the examples of DJ, but it's true when I am there on site and I've got the music locked and loaded, I know exactly what song the parents and grandparents are going to be seated to and the wedding party processional and the entrance of all, all of these things. That's great. I got yeah. locked and loaded. We're good to go. Who's going to cue me? Right. How do I know that, uh, the bride isn't, um, running 30 seconds behind. Yeah. Am I just supposed to magically hit the song and just hope that behind the door they hear it? I mean, I don't know. So it doesn't work very well. If you don't have a coordinator or a planner helping you or a member of the venue helping you, most of the times, if you're having a venue manager, their job isn't to run the ceremony. It's to manage the venue. Mm -hmm. Have a personal attendant. That's yeah. my go-to every time that I feel like I'm flying a little bit blind is asking a personal attendant very nicely. And I, I mean, I cannot tell you how many personal attendants I've worked with that are just incredible. Like, yeah. Just like... Seriously, I can't thank you all enough. Yeah. You saved my ass and you were so helpful where they wait by the door. And I said, give me the thumbs up when this is going to start. Give me the thumbs up when we're ready and do, 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 do. And it's just a thumbs up, a head nod is all I'm going to need. But yeah. if you don't have that, it's, oh man. I would say you definitely cannot have nothing, right? The other thing I always think about too, from a venue side of the, uh, are the guests seated? Who's making sure that the guests are all in their seats? Do right. we still have people pulling in the parking lot? There's nothing more awkward for a guest or a couple when a guest is coming out, you know, um, and the, we're in the middle of the processional and who's, you know, stopping them and it's, it's really uncomfortable. So I would say it's impossible to do it without anybody. And then I would say, um, yes, if you have a personal attendant, I always say, though, to the couple, they have to be in ceremonies are very anxiety producing for most people. So there's still a lot going on. I to me, I say hire a, a coordinator and have them do that. And then I would say personal attendant is an absolutely awesome thing to have as well. In addition, um, and I the way I like to think of a personal attendant, because I think a personal attendant is even better at taking care of you than a coordinator as a coordinator. Sure. I am out in the room. Do I want to check on you and will I? Absolutely. But I'm running all of like the technical side of everything else. 
your personal attendant is taking care of you. Do you need some water? Um, you know, do you need help bustling your dress? Do you need, well, your coordinator is maybe out dealing with the caterer and the yep. dessert and the DJ and stuff. So that person, like you said, can give you the thumbs up. It's still have a personal attendant and a coordinator, right? You know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. <laughs> I look at whoever somebody chooses to be their personal attendant. It's almost more of an honor than a bridesmaid. I mean, yeah, really. right. Yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah. Somebody that it's I can more work. Trust, you know, I mean, just that could run an errand that could just kind of do whatever you need them to do. And, um, and, and for both couple, you know, couples, men and women, both sides of the equation, both, um, could, could use somebody to check in on, on just them, make sure that they're doing okay. We do it as coordinators, but some, sometimes you need more intimate things, you know, that we can't help you with because we're off busy doing something else. So, I would say that person could really help out for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So absolutely. those are things, guys, that we feel we went, you know, created. I created the list. I was interested to see how you would feel. We pretty much agreed on everything. I mean, I think we agreed yeah, on everything. Uh, yeah. It's just easy like that, right? It is easy like that because, I mean, we where we're coming from is just wanting couples to have a good experience knowing what we know. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking about that a lot on the way here today. It's like... We're going to talk a lot about weddings and, and and just so many fine details that some people might roll their eyes at and like, oh my God, these guys are talking about things. It doesn't matter. Just do whatever you want. I get it. But truly, we are coming from a place of just pure passion and experience to be like, no, 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 no. If you just take a slice of what we say and implement it into your day, I promise you, you are going to look back on your wedding years from now to be like, gosh, Darn, that was a great day. Yeah. Like, that's all we want. That's why we're in this industry. Mm -hmm. That's why we continue to be in this industry. Yeah. Is like we know that if you connect the dots in the right way, that you're going to look back on this day as truly, like truly, the best day you've ever had. Yes. Why wouldn't should be everybody want that? They should. They should absolutely want I that. Would think. That's what we want for you. That's why we're here. So. Um, I would love to hear people's thoughts and, yeah. and feelings, or ask questions. If you're like, man, I'm thinking about doing this myself. Or having a family member do it. What's your opinion? We'll give you our honest opinion on should, should you, shouldn't you, or if you're going to, maybe some just some things to think about. Again, I yeah. always say you could do anything you want, but maybe here's three or four things to yep. think about just yep. to make sure you're totally aware of how yep. that could go. And yep. we are happy to help. So send us your thoughts, send us Please your questions. Do. If you are listening to this podcast right now and um, you have not liked um, or followed or subscribed or all the things you can do, um, Please do that. That means so much to us. It's so fun for us to get feedback from people who are listening. Um, and if you subscribe, that means the world to us. Yeah. Um, or if you follow us or and Comment whatever. like Riley is an idiot just so we yeah. know you're listening. Well, I mean, truth hurts. Sometimes. And it means like you're getting to know me. <laughs> the truth hurts. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, so. <laughs> it's not. He's so. I would see how, how she treats me. Didn't I tell you yesterday in a voice message how super smart you were? I think even I even said you were a genius on a message I, I sent him. Uh, that's my ringtone. Me saying you're a genius. Yeah. You're a genius. You're a I genius. I did. I sent so last smart. night in a message. I said you're a genius. We're so. working on a couple different things. That's yeah. that's that's the. Yes, he he's a genius. Uh, th that is the essence of our. I say essence a lot. I say refine a lot. I say baseline a lot, but I don't get used to it. I guess people that are watching or listening, <laughs> I say I say like the same seven words all the time, uh, because I'm I'm an idiot. But that is truly like what makes our business relationship so fun is that we can shoot the craziest ideas back and forth from like, yeah. and and it's like we somehow like just peel back a few layers and have some sort of variation of that yeah. idea. Yeah. That's I mean, that's what keeps me going every single day. Well, and I love it that we're both such fast thinkers and idea people. So you say an idea and then I'm like, oh, what about this? Like I send up this, you know, and we start like brainstorming. Um, it gets, it's fun. It's always yeah. exciting. Yeah. And then some ideas were like, yeah, that's not going to work. Or like, yes, yeah. it's going to work. So you had a genius idea. We'll I, see I, what I, happens. All right. So it's time for the reveal. Gold dust okay. is going to show us. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say. That these, um, they feel cold. Yeah. Still, they do they. St I mean, so I don't know what kind of witchcraft. <laughs> no, they're is. freezing. No, they really are. John, they do you just realize today you took a or not today? Well, yeah, today. I'm gonna say all. Oh, the you're putting things. them back on. I'm just gonna see what that. It is icy cold. Yeah, and How it just it and it's so been cold? on my face this for an hour. And yours is stay cold. Yeah, it's still cold. To it's still cold. 
That's weird. Mine's, yeah, I mean, mine's like, really cold. Yeah, so. take them off. Okay. Let's see what it. we're working with. Fool's gold. Ooh, you look shiny. Dang. Do I? Yeah. You look like illuminated. I feel great. <laughs> Give the camera a little wink or something. Hey. See? Show them what you're working with, baby. <laughs> You thought he was good looking before these gold strips. <laughs> I am Af taken. So. Afterwards, <laughs> take those home. Your wife yeah. is going to put I those could, on. Yeah, can you reuse them? Oh, heck yeah. Put it back in the tray. That's the thing. I feel like they're very much reusable. So, so th okay. So there's I not like a special, like oh, there's not know. like a special ointment on it that like you can't. Well, there was, but I can, the, the print on the back is really, let's see. I'm going to see if it says how many times you wash your face with warm water first. Whoops. We didn't do that. <laughs> we just went straight on. Um, it's a little hard to read because of it's so reflective. Okay, open Feels the package. Good. Yep, I did that. Press and leave them on for 15 to 20 minutes. You went a little over. Remove and clean with water. Uh, yeah, they're very relaxing. Well, very I mean, soothing. if you're selling them on your store, you probably don't want to say that they're reusable. You, well, you can them. never reuse. You have to buy lots of them. <laughs> we recommend buying 15 at a time. I would say... It doesn't say if they are or not. I'm guessing there yeah. is something in them that you. Well, should I would. Not. I would imagine that they would dry up. Yeah. And then you couldn't use them after that. So it brings blood circulation around your eye, improves elasticity, firmness, bringing a youthful and radiant. I'll I'll make a breakout clip where I compare what I looked like before we there started the podcast. And there you go. Unless I, it doesn't look like it changed, then I won't then release don't. that. Yeah. You can so be if you the, don't see that on social media, it did not work. You can be the Ann and Ellis eye bag spokesperson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I bag. laughs> Hi, my name is John. And starting out, I had terrible eye Bye. bags. <laughs> After I bought these from the Ann and Ellis retail shop, I, I'm, I'm a new man. <laughs> don't believe me? Watch my before and after video. <laughs> Hashtag Ann and Ellis eye bags. <laughs> <laughs> Call him the eye beggar. The eye beggar. <laughs> I think I think if nothing else, they feel fantastic on one. Like yeah. It just no, feels... I it's really relaxing, I will say. So I might. There you go. So so we homeschool our kids and they have a huge uh mathematics conference in New York City uh later this year. It is uh it's in Times Square. 